on the 28th day of October, Halloween gave to me 28 taters totting, 27 baby incubators, 26 father's eyes, 25 nipples biting, 24 demons moaning, 23 heads skittering, 22 detectives thrilling, 21 wieners stretching, 20 zombies climbing, 19 richards cheesing, 18 undead trains, 17 morticians regaling, 16 vincents cracking, 15 lees counting, 14 brides abiding, 13 carfax abbeys, 12 fathers stripping, 11 au pairs drowning, 10 children creeping, 9 roddies seizing, 8 snowy mazes, 7 bacons digging, 6 doorways bending, 5 children yowling, 4 zombie bulls, 3 haunted mirrors, 2 monster houses, and a fog that makes it hard to see. Well, hey there. Good morning, everyone. It is Wednesday, October 28th. We only have three days left on the calendar before uh, the end of October, Uh, and that means Halloween. Uh, Halloween is Saturday. I know uh, in many communities, uh, trick-or-treating is kind of on the kibosh because of the the recent spike in, uh, in COVID cases and whatnot. Uh, and that's a bummer. I'm gonna, uh, I'm, I'm gonna have candy. Uh, it's gonna be on the porch. I'm gonna have the light on and, uh, and I'm probably gonna keep my distance too, which is a real bummer, but, um, you know, gotta keep safe y'all got to keep safe. I've, I've got a- actual honest to goodness friends of mine who have been, uh, been suffering with COVID and, uh, and I don't want it. That shit seems nasty. Like, like not all the time, but when it gets nasty, that shit seems pretty nasty. So, uh, be careful out there, everybody just uh, keep yourself safe. Keep your loved ones safe. That's all I'll say about it. Not no, no political statements here. Just be safe. That's all. Um, that out of the way, and and that's kind of sad, uh, but it it's still Halloween. There are still plenty of reasons to celebrate. Uh, one of them is this: I have had such a a, a grand time uh, going through this list of movies, and I'm I'm really disappointed it's coming to an end. But also, uh, I got to be honest with you: not doing a podcast every day sounds okay next month. Uh, maybe every other day. So, but it, it has been a great time. I, I fully intend to do this again next year with an entirely new set of movies. Um, so, you know, let me know if you're interested in hearing more of this uh, next year. I, I have no issue with making this a Legion tradition. I think it kind of ought to be. Uh, we, ought, we ought to celebrate in grand fashion. So, uh, let me have a little sip of coffee here. Mmm. That's good, Joe. So... <laughs> And <laughs> we're, we're talking about the last of our possession movies today. And that means we're talking about Starry Eyes. Uh, Starry Eyes is one of the more recent films on the list. One of the lesser known movies on the list, perhaps. Uh, and, and one of my favorites on the list, quite frankly. Watching it again, uh, it was really, in, in some ways, revel- revelatory. Um, to see Alex Esso, who has gone on to do really good work in a lot of stuff, uh, to see her at a, at like in kind of her breakout role, the one that was like, "Holy shit, who is this?" And she is just fantastic. Like she she has an enormous amount of range in the movie. She she is up to the challenge of a very difficult role. Uh, if, for those of you who have never seen it, Starry Eyes is, uh, uh, Alex Esso is the actress who plays a young girl who, um, wants to be a, a movie star, not young girl, a young woman, sorry, uh, a young actress in LA trying to make it, um, work in a shitty job, uh, at this place that's kind of based on Hooters, um, called like Taters or something. I, I know they call the kids tater tots, and and that's also somewhat a euphemism for the tits. Anyway, uh, so she's trying to make it big. She hangs out with a group of uh, sort of ne'er do wells fellow actors and directors and people in the industry and stuff like that. Noah Segan, notably, is one of the guys that is in that crew. Um, and there, there's a bit of the familiar if you've ever been. Um, in the arts to any degree where you have pursued a project with other people who are also artistic in nature and can sometimes be lazy as well. 
And there, there's a hint of that of like this sort of this sort of aimless actor culture of like we're going on auditions. Sometimes we get them. Most of the time we don't. And we're just kind of hanging out waiting for something to happen. And and Alex Esso's character, to her credit, is, you know, she works a shitty job, but she's working a shitty job and going to auditions and stuff like that and trying to manage that. Like, I hear I want to pursue my dreams, but also I have to pay the bills. It's that, you know, art versus commerce kind of thing, only on a micro personal level. And so Alex Esso uh, ends up going to an audition that changes her life when she she runs into a... Uh, a group that is like, hey, we think that you're something special. And the reason they think she's something special is because you may have heard Duncan and I talk about this. Um, but there's a scene in which she gives an audition. She does she does pretty well. But then as she leaves the room, she's certainly under the impression that she is not going to get this role. And so she goes into the bathroom, into a bathroom stall, and has a good old-fashioned freak-out that involves her ripping out her own hair and that kind of thing. And then one of the women from the uh, audition room sees her doing this and is like, you know, maybe we uh, we acted a little too hastily. Maybe you're just the girl we're looking for after all. And so, uh, so begins a very cultish experience as she is some, uh, like indoctrinated and changed to become part of this uh, this new uh, this new group. And, and there is a great, uh, massacre scene leading up to her final transformation. And it's, it's a terrific movie. It like on the thematic level, it works, you know, it's that kind of what price fame sort of thing. But also when you look at her shitty friends, you're like, ah, is this the wrong choice? Probably, but I get it, you know? And that's, that's what you want with a movie like this is the, I get it. I understand why she does this. Like she becomes a horrifying monster in many ways, but I get it. I get it. Um, so th that the theme works well. It is graphic at times in a way that is surprising, but really fun. Uh, and you just can't overstate how good Alex Esso is in the role. Like this is, it's, it's sort of that Rosemary's baby thing of like without Mia Farrow, Rosemary's baby doesn't work. And in much of the same way without, an actress like an Alex Esso, and I, I struggle to think who could do the part better. I, I don't know, uh, but it, like this turn for her is that kind of thing where the movie just doesn't, it, it just falls apart if she doesn't deliver a great performance, and she does. Um, she's a she's a great actress. Has got Mike Flanagan got wind of her and is is throwing her into a lot of stuff now. Like she famously was the Wendy in Dr. Sleep. And oh my God, she is so good. She is like, it's such a minor role. Alex Esso as, as Wendy Torrance is fucking amazing. Uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, I can't, I can't recommend that, that small bit. I, I like the whole movie, but that little moment is, is so good. Danny, she just, oh, it's just pitch perfect. But, uh, yeah. So starry eyes, fantastic. Uh, can't recommend it enough. You should definitely include it in in a list of your final watches, uh, which we are getting right down to. These are the last of the movies we're going to be watching this Halloween, and I've got three more, folks. I got three more in the pipe. Uh, three three classics that we will be talking about. Like I said, we're probably not going to talk about these same movies again next year. So I was a little more, uh, a, a, I suppose, a little more forgiving of uh, my picks being uh, maybe fairly mainstream, uh, at least two of the three, perhaps. Um, so at any rate, you can look as always, folks, no wagering, please. But uh, I, I think we're going to uh, we're, we're going to have a good time with the, the final three. Um, all right. That's it, folks. Have a great Wednesday. Have a spooky Wednesday. And, uh, and we'll be back here tomorrow for uh, the 29th day in our 31 days of uh, Halloween celebration. As always, you can drop me a line at bo, B-O at legionpodcast.com uh, if you want to join in in the final days of our celebration. Uh, please feel free to. And uh, otherwise, I will see everybody tomorrow. Bye. Bye.